Cougs House. The Houston Cougars play basketball tonight, and you know we've got to tell you who they're playing against. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, the podcast of what you're Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach Parker Ainsworth, here to break down all things Cougs. If you're a U of H fan or just a hater who came to stop by, please be sure to subscribe down below. Please like Cougs in your newsfeed each and every day. We appreciate you making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. That's what you found. It's so good to see you again. Um, remember, do you want to give away over 250? Next one, 1750. Hit the credit. Let's get there. Like and comment on the video to let us know you're in the contest. Uh, if, after listening to this abbreviated bonus episode short sweet to the point episode you don't know what to say about houston versus montana you just think it's gonna blow you don't have anything to say about it tell us in the comments down below what your favorite side dish from thanksgiving was yesterday now we got a couple of things to jump into uh, today's episode is going to be all focused on that montana basketball game uh, we're just gonna look at a couple of things again it's a quick preview pod um, nothing too too terribly crazy i do think this is the kind of thing that houston ought to be fairly well prepared for but i digress a little bit um obviously the first segment we've got to talk some about this high scoring backcourt they've got going that includes a freshman named money which is impressive as always but then the second segment we're talk about how he's going this game's gonna be on the defense side and dominating the glass so let's jump on in and talk a little bit about montana montana is two and two this season uh they're two and two this season with wins against northwest indian which i did not know was a university uh, and uc davis which i did know was a university they played oregon and lost by 14 they played north dakota state uh, without the transfer, uh, the big guy that went to what Grant, whatever his name was, that we won him for a hot second. He is now at Alabama. I don't care about him any much. But uh, North Dakota State, without him, still beat Montana by nine. They will, however, have taken nearly, uh, I guess it's just over a week off before ultimately playing Houston this Friday night. Um, you know, it's projected if you do king palm things you buy into the analytics they've got it as a uh, 25 point win about for houston based on running numbers and things like that uh houston is second in king palm montana is 188th they're seeing a blowout coming i will say though there are a couple things that are interesting in looking at montana as a program for one uh, they play faster than teams houston has played so far but notably much slower than every team in the Big 12 is playing thus far. And that's in terms of average possession length. Uh, most Big 12 teams are well under the 16-second mark on their average length. That means fast breaks and stuff. Obviously, we'll pull those down, and defense leads fast breaks. But uh, again, all of the Big 12 is pretty much under the 16 mark. And uh, Montana, I would say Wyoming, Montana is playing about 18.2 seconds per possession playing a few less possessions than the ncaa average as well um they're playing uh frankly about the same amount of possessions as houston's played because in the second half of some of these blowout games houston's had they kind of slow the pace down a little bit i do think it's interesting in looking at uh montana's guards though is they've kind of got some big guards and uh I think it's Anan Moody, Anan Moody, Anan Moody, Anan Moody. Um, he's a 6'3 senior. Um, he can flat fill it up. And I know that he'll probably get Jamal Shedd on him, even though Moody is a traditional two guard and a bucket getting two guard at that. I imagine Houston starts Jamal Shedd on him because he kind of steers the ship in everything they do on offense. He has not shot the ball particularly well this year. Uh, he's four of 16 from behind the arc. Teams are running him off the three point line. It looks like based on his attempt numbers and the clips I saw against Oregon. But as far as his junior season, sophomore season, the last couple of years, he can shoot the ball very well. He's good off the bounce, good off movement. Uh, I think that's why you got to put a guy like Jamal shed on him. You got to hope to fluster and impress him off screens and those kinds of things. Um, on the whole though, he is leading them in points. Uh, he's leading them with 18.3 points per game. 
that's a lot of points in the contrast. We're going to especially when you play a slower pace of basketball. Uh, their entire team, for what it's worth, is only getting 78 points per game. So again, that's pretty sizable chunk of it coming out of one singular guard. He also plays most of the minutes. Uh, I guess basketball reference has him at 32 Point three minutes, but Kim Palm hasn't playing. Uh, what was the eighty six point seven percent of all meaningful minutes thus far? Uh, he is an impressive basketball player in his own right, and I think he's the kind of guy that when he walks into Fertitta Center will be an instant, easy to boo kind of guy. He has um, a little bit different haircut and a different swagger about him, and all these kinds of floppy things. I think uh, you know he, he's an easy student section target, but the dude can hoop. Right now, he is joined in the backcourt not as a starter. Um, the other starting guard is a kid named Brandon Whitney, who is also a senior, six one, been there a while. I bet he is the LJ Cryer matchup. Um, but I bet the guy that Houston has more notes on as far as giving the scouting report is this freshman freshman from Oakland named Money Williams. So Money is six foot four, uh, is a two hundred pound guard. Uh, he also, when like a really hyper small ball lineup, kind of like Houston uses Terrence Arsenal, has played some power forward minutes, um, and he's he's really he's a he's a bucket getter in his own right. Um, a lot more fluid uh, with basketball. He's a lot more of an attacking type of guy. Um, he's not the catch and shoot shooter from behind the arc by any stretch of the imagination. Um, at least he has not been in his four college games thus far. I, I got to be honest, I'm not going to dive back into every single high school game the guy played, but it does look like thus far in college he's not turned out to be a great shooter, but he finishes around the rim really, really well. Uh, good floaters and stuff like that. That's Money Williams. So make sure, um, you know, keep an eye out for that freshman coming off the bench. Um, because he's coming off the bench, what I don't know is exactly who that matchup will be. It was like an Emmanuel Sharp. Because again, he's also a six four. He's kind of turned out to be a pretty strong defender this year for us. Is that a Damian Dunn? Is that a Terrence Arsenal? Because it's a bench unit kind of guy. Like who is rotating in with him? Whatever the case may be, again, he's a high times, a big time score. He's getting twelve and a half points off the bench as a freshman. Um, he is coming off the bench and playing just eighteen minutes per game, but getting those twelve and a half points. Um, and it's, I think, it'd be easy to say like, oh, like. 12 and a half points. Well, like obviously like that must be just thrown off because he only plays 18 minutes. There must be some big outlier of a game. But as you look at it's like game logs and stats and going across the board here, uh, there's only one game, frankly, where he's not in double figures. That was the UC Davis game that they ended up winning for what it's worth. Um, I actually feel like that game probably pulls his averages down. I'm not a mathematician, but he had 19, uh, against the Northwest Indian College, but he had 13 against Oregon. He had 15 against North Dakota State. Like he's he can go get baskets in a, a big time kind of way. Houston's got a matchup with him. I feel confident in Houston's guards, and I also feel confident whenever I need to take care of my ride or die because I go to one E. Bay Motors. Now, if your ride or die needs a checkup, a tune up, or some sort of a new part or thing for it, go to eBay Motors because passion. Drive and patience are what brings home the winning trophy and also keeps that ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. Over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Just eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash with all the parts you need the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep ready to die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusion supply ebay guarantee fit is only available to u.s customers now i think the key to this game is going to be houston defensively um and not just on those two guards but truthfully dominating the glass in a way that's going to be kind of almost an eyesore to watch. Montana themselves does not start with a lineup much different in the terms of size than Houston does. They also roll out a 6'9 and a 6'8, not unlike Javier and Jawan. Um, they will occasionally bring in like a 6'10 off the deep bench. He'll play either forward or center. Um, they just, they're not the kind of like, they're certainly not Utah. They're not the kind of team that brings in a bunch of 
height and length to nominate the paint in those kind of instances. I do think, though, that um, that's why this game... Well, you think that it's like an even matchup for Houston or something like that. That's actually why I think this game comes down to Houston's just going to dominate the glass because those guys get out-rebounded by everyone they play, whereas Houston is consistently with their size you know, using length, using motor, using depth, and things like that to overcome what they lack in height. Now they're playing a team that's kind of liked sized in height. Um, I could see this being the kind of game where Houston ends up with 25 offensive rebounds. Like, I, I, if they really wanted to and played hard the full 40, like, I I think they could. Now, that's not to say that Houston won't be working on things. Houston plays Montana today, Friday the 24th, but will play Xavier a week from today, Friday, December 1st. Um, that is a road game. That is a true test. That is going to be a really, really difficult game. So look to see a bunch of different lineups are not there that could throw off this rebounding battle because Montana's going to stick with two traditional bigs. Not giants, but two traditional bigs. And so if Houston wants to run that four-guard lineup with Arsenault, you're not outsized by that much. But you're going to work it against a team that has true, true big men out there. And that will be interesting to see how it works out. Because if Arsenal can cover a true 6'8", like traditional power forward, then suddenly, like, wait a second, we might have something here, right? Now, I thought we had something there when I saw it working against Utah, but we know therefore it's also popped and shined a lot of outside perimeter stuff is a little bit different. Um so it's a different kind of test. This is, a, 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 in its own way, a test to see how those lineups will work. I'm excited about it. I think it's going to work well for Houston. Again, I could see a lot of rebound going Houston's way. As far as like ultimate, like their best rebounder, I, you know, honestly, Money Williams has his own fair share. Now, Deshaun Thomas is their 6'9, 230 senior center well-built kid, big, strong. Um, I could see him muscling around Javier, but if they go to a smaller lineup or pull Javier you know, off the bench or put him to the bench or something, I don't see him muscling around Jawan Roberts. And frankly, he might be able to physically like shove around a guy like a JoJo Tugler, but I feel like JoJo is going to run circles around this kid just the way his motor runs. Um, and so I don't know that that's going to work out a whole lot in – their favor. Um, I say I'll have to say that I guess I could be proven wrong. But I think rebounding, ending possessions in that instance will be key to Houston. And since they're not giving up so much size behind them, the second part of this defensive thing that I think is going to go Houston's way is all of that ball pressure gets ramped up because you're not worried about getting burnt at the rim behind you because of size. Now, I know that that's like probably seems like a lay person thing. Like, oh, you're, uh, but there's like an intuitive thing you watch in college basketball players that when Jamal Shedd knows that he can like depend on the guy behind him and is not worried about giving up lobs to a seven footer behind him, they're going to be playing tighter on the ball and all types of on ball coverages. That monster trap off the one, four pick and roll at the top will be that much more intense. Now, if you get foul trouble like that, that's where this year's Houston depth plays in, and they don't ever have to take the foot off the gas in those instances. I feel really, really confident about this one. Uh, Ken Palm, again, has it like a 20, I'm sorry, I misspoke earlier, 23-point win for Houston. Um, I huh, Am I crazy to think I think it's more than that? I'm thinking this thing's 30. I think it's 30. I think it's, I think it's, We'll say 85-55. And it's that kind of a game for Houston where they dominate the glass. And I said they could get 25 offensive rebounds. I bet they get closer to 15 just because at some point you naturally kind of peel back into the second half. Um, But I think this is that kind of a game for Houston to do a lot of things right and work a lot of lineups. As far as testing those lineups out defensively, see and pay attention to, and I'll be paying attention to as well, how much of the small ball lineup Houston uses. Uh, and I would say that however much of it you see, you should see directly translated into what they look like against Xavier, right? Like, do they roll out with that small ball lineup to throw Xavier off? Xavier, a week from Friday, a week from today, I should say, as you're listening to this on Friday, um, Xavier is a much taller team than Montana. 
Um, but they're not like Utah. And so you could see, you know, you're not giving up a whole lot of things there. Xavier's really, really good. You're going to their place. Uh, it's nice to have a full week between Montana and that game to practice and get better at things. But I almost wish. So Houston won the Charleston Classic last weekend. They play Montana on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. They play Xavier a week later. I don't necessarily want to be tired by the time I get to Xavier. I wish there were more games in there to keep on working on things. So look for Samson and cram a lot of that kind of work on it and game rep situation stuff into this Montana game because it's the only one they got. Now, as we continue Thanksgiving at my household on through different people seeing different things Friday night, I will not be tweeting this one out live. You could very well end up with the kind of thing where I am live tweeting it at midnight, much like I did the Utah game just because I'm up and my mind's running and that's where I'm at. Um, but I will have to be watching this and breaking it down before Cougars After Dark on Saturday night. We go live at 9.30 to talk all things Houston Cougars. We'll be talking about the Central Florida football game between Central Florida and Houston that day. We'll be talking about this basketball game. We'll be looking at next steps of the football program, what to look for in Houston versus Xavier after watching the Montana game, and more. So make sure you hit subscribe on YouTube. And then hit that bell so you know we go live. And we'll be talking all things Houston Cougars on Saturday night as well. Thank you all so much for tuning into Locked on Cougs a second time today. Locked on Cougs is a proud member of Locked on Podcast Network. That means your team every day. Go Cougs.